must grant permission in order to screen share. I cannot share my screen. Oh, okay. So, um, our topic for today is about second degree curves. So, I mentioned to you that the geometric construction module is composed of many sub-modules. We started with the arcs and circles, but these are the simple arcs drawn a segment of a circle. And this time, we're going to talk about uh, two types of curves. Um, one is called the ellipse, and the other one is a spiral. So basically, we will talk about um, how to make this. These are called second degree curves. But before we go into that, I'll just make a short comment about the submission so far. Um, I noticed that some of you were did not follow instructions, um, especially. Well, I, I only check a few so far because you know to check all the videos at one sitting takes too long. You have to keep on. I uh, have to keep on doing that by parts. Um, but there are those who submitted a video but did not write their name on the paper before making the video. They just wrote it afterwards. And then there are those who submitted the videos only. And then um, I think the, so far those are the, the problems that I saw. But uh, there was someone who posted in YouTube because she did not find it uh, easy to upload in Canvas. So that was acceptable also as long as I get to see the video. That's okay. Um, so I, I hope I hope you have fun. You had fun doing the video and also the mandala because um, there are more things to make, more videos to make. No? Uh, this set of slides uh, came from architect Carabio. Uh, that's why I have to write here to acknowledge her. Uh, she made this for all of us in the same the same course. No? Uh, because it's very difficult to teach this if I cannot demonstrate it. And then to, to make a, a video or even a slide presentation for it takes a long time. And she happened to, to do, do this during the summer. Uh, she had a lot of time um, because she was asked to, I think she was asked to do it. That's why we have this. No? Uh, we are simply going to make, well, not so simple, but we are going to make this Four figures, okay. A four-centered ellipse, a concentric circle a method for drawing an ellipse, the conic spiral, and the Archimedes spiral. But um, we'll do it in a, first with the four-centered ellipse, then the ellipse using the concentric circle method, the Archimedes spiral, then finally the conic spiral. So we'll start with this four-centered ellipse. So uh, at the side, you see a, um, a legend where a color or the, the thickness of the, um, of the lines in the drawing represent uh, how it should be drawn, okay? Uh, so you have a thick black bold line and a fine line, and then a blue line, a bold, uh, a bold line, and then a pencil, which is red. Okay, so to draw this, we need to look for four points, four uh, focal points for the compass, um, and that's why it looks so complicated this way. So this can be drawn using the compass alone. So you start off with um, 60. So this is supposed to be 60 mm uh, circle because 600 mm is 60 centimeters. So I think she made a mistake here. So or a six centimeter circle at the center of the 
paper and then write an, uh, draw another circle with a radius of 120 millimeter, okay, or 12 centimeter. Now that you have the two circles, in the smaller circle, you mark off points A and B, which is along the horizontal, uh, passing through the midpoint, the, the center of the circle, and um, intersecting with the small circle, okay? And from a point C, which is along the vertical line passing through the center of the circle and touching the bigger circle, um, you draw a line that extends to, that pass through points A and B. So you draw something like a cone. And then do the same at the other side. Okay, this time you, uh, you sort of make a mirror image of what you did earlier. And then from point C, we make an arc with radius CE, okay? Um, and point E is a point which is along a vertical line passing to the center point of the circle and intersecting the smaller circle, okay? So with that radius, you make a, an arc um, which ends along the guidelines that we made earlier. And you do the same at the other side, okay? So you have to be very careful with this because um, the crucial part is the connection. So we made two arches so far, two arcs so far, um, and then we're supposed to make the smaller arcs at the end of the both sides. The smaller arcs, um, the center of the circle, which uh, is located in point G. So G is the intersection of the two guidelines that we made earlier. And then with the radius GH, where H is the point where the previous arc we made touched with the guideline. So we make a, an arc that is supposed to connect H with its counterpart on the other side, a mirror image. So that completes the, well, we also do the other side, the right side, and then that completes the, the ellipse. So it, it's actually very easy. You just get confused on where the center point of the circle should be located but everything is uh, according to the guides here. No? Uh, the crucial part is the connection between the two arcs, okay? Um, in this drawing, for example, you can notice that here, uh, it did not really reach, okay? So the usual trick is that the arcs do not, should not go, should not touch the, um, the guidelines, there should be a very small space so that you can fill that in with a point one or a very fine pen uh, sort of to, to fix if it's not really aligned. Hopefully the, align, the misalignment is very little, but if it is very big, I think you have to draw the, the whole thing all over again, okay? So therefore, be very careful and be very accurate because if you missed out, uh, your, arcs, your, your arcs will be bigger or smaller than what it should be. The next one is the concentric circle method. This one is more difficult because to make the ellipse, we are not going to use the arc, uh, the compass you are going to use the French curve, okay? Um, there are two types of French curve, or I don't know whether the other type is called a French curve. So you have the, the usual set of French curves, which is like, I think there are four, four types, a very tall one, and then a very short one, then 
Um, the other type that I, I mentioned is like a very flexible, um, flexible ruler or very flexible. Uh, I don't know how to describe it, but in principle, you can make curves out of it because it's very flexible. Then when you find that curve, then you can draw. No? Um, that's also a good uh, tool to use. Now, how to make this ellipse using the concentric circle method? You again start out with a six centimeter line or sixty millimeter circle, and then also another one twenty millimeter circle, one twenty millimeter radius, um, and then divide the circle into sixteen equal parts. So, um, architect Karabi already did the math for you. So each one should be 22.5 degrees each. So you start off with the vertical, passing through the center, and then horizontal, and then divide this by 22.5. Um, this, you can also pass through a 45 degree um, triangle to get these points here and here. And then for the ones here, uh, you can use a protractor. Or if you have a um, adjustable triangle, that's also good. As long as you divide the circle, the outer circle into 10 equal, uh, 16 equal parts, sorry, it's 16. And then extend lines from the, the markings around the outer circle. Uh, to pass through the center mark, okay? So this also checks your division because otherwise if it's misaligned, it will not pass through the, the center mark, okay? So make sure that you make this line straight all the way to the end to check that it really passes through the center mark because if you're going to start using, uh, drawing it from the center going here, the center going to the other side, uh, you might miss the chance to check that your division is actually accurate. Of course, you have to start off with a very light pencil. And then if you are sure that, okay, it passes through the center mark, then you can darken it a little. So draw vertical lines from points A to F. Okay, so if you notice the vertical lines do not extend all the way, it's because we need them only somewhere along that part part okay so um so never mind uh where just imagine that it will be somewhere around that part um and then it's not very clear here but from the intersection of these let's call them guidelines radial guard guidelines that uh hits the smaller circle you draw a horizontal line for example here, there's a horizontal line going towards the vertical line we made earlier along this uh, radial guideline. So it, um, it intersects at this point, so we label it K. And then from here, we also extend a horizontal line, and then it meets the vertical line from where it touches the outer circle, and we label it as L. Then that's how we label everything else, no? And then um, we do the same at the other side. So here, okay. So we do the same at the other side. So we all, we now have all of these uh, points around. So these points serve as the guide for the ellipse. So the ellipse is supposed to pass through all of these points, okay. And that's how we draw it. Now, how do you use a French curve, okay? Um, you have to do this manually. You have to look for the, for example, you have to consider three points at a time. For example, for, for this point and this point and this one. So you have to look for this curve in the French curve, okay? So look for this section um, in the French curve then when you find it, you, 
you draw it, no? but then you have to check first, uh, or you can you can do it directly and then look for the next three points. Okay, so therefore here you're going to use uh, look for six six arcs from the French curve. And again, the connection should be very smooth. Um, it's really tricky. That's why you need to, to practice. So don't um, well, don't dream of just doing this in one go. You know, if you're if you're still afraid to use the French curve, so don't be af afraid to commit mistakes. It's really part of the of the exercise. But it's better if you submit something which is already clean. Okay, and that's why I need you to submit the final project because. Uh, the final drawing in JPEG or I don't know PDF because uh, that's where I check the accuracy. Um, I cannot check the accuracy in the video. Okay, now for the arc of Archimedes, the spiral of Archimedes, I'm sorry, um, we make a circle with a radius of 8 cm or 80 millimeter. I don't know why she made this mistake. No? Um, and then we divide the circle into 10 equal parts. Okay. So divide 360 divided by 10, so you get uh, 36 degrees. Um, but then you can start off with a horizontal line and then draw, uh, divide it equally from there. Now, um, a usual trick that is used when dividing into difficult um, arcs or difficult angles is that you, you minimize the error by referencing on, in, on some very definite Line, for example, the the vert the horizontal line here is definite. No? Um, you cannot make an error with that. So you base it from here, and then make an arc and draw this radial guideline. And then you also do the same the other side. You also base it from here, rather than continue continuing all the way here. Okay, um, so the error might end up somewhere in the middle. Because after doing this, you do this, and after doing the other side, you do this. So there might be an error, a little error here. Okay, um, that minimizes actually the error. Because if you if you keep on doing it this way, um, the error might be divided among all of these other, uh, uh, well, other segments, no. And then you also divide. Well, in AutoCAD, we call it offset. So you make smaller circles um, at eight millimeter increments each, or 0.8 centimeter um, from the center. It's, uh, so there should be 10 of this, you know, because this is eight centimeter. So this is 0 0.8, 0 0.8 all the way until the, the end. So you have now 10 circles. And then starting from a point A, which we will use the leftmost quadrant of the outer circle to the uh, intersection of a radial guideline to the next inner circle, which is point B. So we connect an arc, okay? And then we do the same to point C, which is the intersection of a radial guideline to the next inner circle, and then so on and so forth. So we do that. No? And if you notice, um, we're not going to use again the uh, compass. So we will use again the, um, the French curve. Now you have to do this first in pencil so that you get the curve. And then you can actually um, experiment on the curve until you see that it is smooth. OK? 
Okay. Now in AutoCAD, I would use spline and then click on this and then the AutoCAD would make the arc smooth. No, they could adjust itself. But in manual drawing, you'll have to do it by hand, and then you have to do a lot of trial and error. And then once you're satisfied with the curve that you made, which passes through all these guidelines, then you can look for the that curve in the French curve. Okay? So that arc in the French curve. So again, use three points for each to make sure that it is smoother. And finally, we have the conic spiral. Um, the conic spiral is like the uh, side view of the arc of Archimedes. And um, that's why we start off with, the, with this illustration where we saw, we see the arc of Archimedes, the guideline here. But um, it says here that use the ver arc Archimedes spiral extend vertical lines from point one to six, uh, including the center mark. So from all of these points here, you extend it to a horizontal line, which will be the base of our conic spiral. Then make a cone with a height of 160 mm or 16 mm, okay? And then, if we zoom into that, this is how it looks like. Um, we next divide horizontally into 10 equal parts. Okay, so therefore, mm, this is like 16 mm each, okay, or 1.6 centimeter. And then we look for the guidelines, starting from the bottom here. And then you just use alternate for the next guideline. It will be the next radial guideline plus the uh, horizontal, next horizontal guideline intersection. And then for the third, so it, it's just, um, it just uh, follow. No? And then you connect all of those with the, an arc. Again, you have to first draw it in pencil until you are you're satisfied with the smoothness of your arc, uh, which pass through all of those points before you ink it using the uh, French curve. And so you get all this curve, okay? So it's not easy. <laughs> I'm going to tell you beforehand. Um, but uh, it's best if well I cannot I cannot see you uh, draw unless you make the video of yourself making a drawing because we are not in a studio so I cannot draw around the each table and look at how you are performing so therefore my instructions would be to make a video again, of yourself making the exercise and one video for each of the figures, okay? So try to make it short as possible so, so that it's not also very uh, heavy. It doesn't consume much space in your memory cards. So you can, after making one video, you can, I don't know, transfer it, then erase in your memory card and start another video. And hopefully that, that makes it easier to make the videos. But again, you have to draw for, uh, write your name first at the bottom center of the paper before making your drawing. Okay. Uh, you can use um, A4 or short band paper for this. Uh, it doesn't matter. Um, then edit your video to show only parts of each step you did so that it's shorter. And then, of course, make a short video for each of the drawing. Then submit the video and the scan copy or photo of your drawing. Okay? Um, without that, it's incomplete. 
So for those who did not, were not able to submit the second part of the requirement, I am still giving you a chance to submit, okay? Uh, and also for those who have not submitted the video because of some difficulty. So you should, I am still giving you a chance to submit. Please look for technical help, maybe from your classmates. Or if your internet is really very slow, then you have time to look for a um, stronger signal. Um, so you should really exert effort to, to submit. No? And I'm giving you some leeway, so I'm not going to be very strict on this deadline. Um, in this class, it's important that you, you learn how to draw rather than you learn how to uh, be punctual. My, in my design class, they have to be punctual. Okay, that's part. But here, uh, I'm going to be more lenient when it comes to deadlines. As long as it's you who are doing the exercise, and then you exert really, you do you really do your best. I see that you you're doing your best. Okay, so I think that's it for for this. Um, is there any question? Because otherwise, we can end the session. So I'm going to post the exercise in Canvas, um, maybe uh, towards uh, around anytime today. The deadline will be on Friday. And then we will not meet on Wednesday, so that you have this time to, to make the videos. Sir, are we allowed to use the flexible bending type of French curve? Yes, um, that's a cute name for that tool. I don't know what it's called really. Sir, is it one drawing per paper? Yes, it's one drawing per paper. So therefore you're going to submit four videos and then four images for paper or for PDF or JPEG. Will you post the PowerPoint today, sir? Yes, I'm going to post uh, the one that architect Carabio made. And I'm also going to uh, post the video of this uh, session. But the um, video depends on what happens because Google Meet sometimes assigns the video to one of you. That's why I have to keep on asking sa some of you to please um, Anyway, if, if you receive the video in your email, so don't be surprised. Uh, it happens, I don't, even Google Meet is, does not know what's uh, happening. So just um, just uh, change the ownership to me so that I can access it. Otherwise, I cannot even view it, much, much less download it. Where can we send the scan output of the mandala? It should be in Canvas along with a video. Uh, is time lapse allowed? Yes. In fact, it's it's better. No? Although the time lapse um, time lapse is still the same. It's just by frame. It's not a continuous video or something like a. Uh, a video that you fast track, but I will allow a time lapse. Okay, so I think that's a skill that you have to to learn in this time and age, no, making videos. So I don't have that that skill, so that's why I'm just recording my my lecture. Um, we were told maybe at some point when I finished recording all the lectures, we'll make our own recording. Um, for the lecture so that we can have an asynchronous. No? I don't have to be online and also you so you can just uh, view the videos and in better quality. Um, anything else? Any other questions? So I'll count to five. One, two, three. So I don't think there are any more questions, but you can still ask me questions um, through Google uh, through Google Classroom, or you can email me if you have other questions. So that's it for now. So good morning to.